Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel or welcome to our channel if you're new here. In today's video we'll be showing you how to create chocolate frogs. Now if you're a fan or if you know of the Harry Potter films and book series, you'll know that chocolate frogs are a huge treat that they have in the film and series. And uh, we're huge Harry Potter fans ourselves so we thought we would do something a little different this week and um, we might be thinking about doing more Harry Potter recipes on the channel, just let us know if you like that. And uh, yeah, we're doing chocolate frogs, but with a kind of honeydukes colored twist. So if you'd like to see how to make this, then please keep on watching. Okay, so our ingredients in this recipe are not exactly as extensive as our previous videos, because basically what you need is your choice of chocolate and your choice of ingredients to put inside or on top of your chocolate frogs. So for the first item we're using is a melting chocolate. So we got three different colors of our melting chocolate. The first one is a very nice hot bubblegum pink. And we're also getting a yellow as well. It's more of a pastel-y sort of lemon yellow. Almost like lemon sherbet, like what Dumbledore likes. So that's why we thought that that would be a great color to work with. As well as the original milk chocolate. Now, milk chocolate is the original type of chocolate that they use to make chocolate frogs. I know that there's a certain brand of Godiva chocolate that they actually use in the Universal Studios parks. That's what they use to make their frogs. But we couldn't get that on hand, so you can use any chocolate that you can find on hand. We're also going to be using some crushed walnuts in this. We wanted to change things up because normally chocolate frogs are just basic solid chocolate. We'll also be using these sprinkles. Now, we found these sprinkles and they all represent the Honeydukes colors. That that's what gave us the idea of changing things up with the color scheme. We're also using these candied silver balls as well and these will act as eyes on some of the frogs. We also saw these nice sprinkles that kind of remind me of Luna Lovegood because it's all of the colors that she represents like purple, blue, and um, all those nice colors so we thought that that would be perfect as well. And then we just went for a good old white and gold sprinkle combination. Now we got all of our sprinkles at Bulk Barn which is kind of like a bulk store where you can buy things for baking and other necessities. We also got this candy melting bowl. Now this candy melting bowl we've had for a very long time. We got it from Michael's actually and um, it's a craft store here in Canada. So it's pretty cool. You'll see how we're going to use that later on in the video. We also made some of these boxes because unfortunately we do not have the actual chocolate frog box. So we wanted to work with something pretty similar. And this is the mold. Now I bought this mold on Amazon so if I could find the link I will keep it in the description because it is a really really good chocolate mold. Okay, so like I was mentioning earlier, these are the melting pots that we're going to be using and they're pretty easy. You just stick them into the microwave for about a minute or so and they melt your chocolate. So we're going to separate our chocolates right now. So I'm going to start off by melting the dark, the regular milk chocolate and the yellow chocolate. So before I put that into the microwave, I am going to just quickly figure out where I want my sprinkles to be because once this comes out of the microwave you want to make sure that you're pouring it in instantly because it'll start to dry if you leave it aside and work with other things. So I'm just taking these silver balls and I'm putting them into the eyes. So in this mold what's great about it is that the eyes are actually formed into the mold so you can put things in the eyes and when you do melt the chocolate and freeze it the eyes actually pop out and you'll see when I finish them here. But basically you can have a lot of fun with this. This is really great for kids as well because they can have fun and add their own little sprinkles or whatever they'd like to add into it. It's uh, pretty simple and you can see I'm adding walnuts into some of them. Some of them I'm adding the sprinkles and I'm adding them in certain places that I'd like to see them at. Now one thing to keep in mind if you are going to use the walnuts, it tastes delicious, that's one thing. <laughs> but the only thing is, is that when you put it on the bottom where the back of the frog is, when you are melting the chocolate and putting it on top, it's not going to cover the 
walnuts completely just keep that in mind if you are doing this that also goes for the sprinkles and everything because we want the sprinkles to show on the top and that's why we put them at the bottom here now if you don't want them to show and you want them to peek through when you bite into it I would say put in the some of the chocolate first as a layer and then you would put whatever you need to put in the center of it and then cover that layer that way that when you bite into it you can see the layer there but for the purposes of this we wanted it to show on the top so that's why we are just adding them in first before we add in any chocolate And once you're satisfied with the way everything is looking, you can go ahead and melt your chocolate. Depending on what you're using, it might take longer or less time to do. This only took me about a minute in the microwave and I'm just mixing that together. You can see it's a little bit thicker and you want it to be a little bit thick but not too chunky because then it's not going to come out very smooth on the top as well. So you can see it has the just right amount of consistency where it's able to be drizzled down. And what I did was I put it in for a minute and then about another 15 seconds afterwards just so that it was easy to work with into the mold. So you can see it, we're adding a little bit at a time. You want to take your time with this because you want to let that layer of the chocolate seep through and stick together with all of the decorations that you put in there. And then you can go ahead afterwards and keep adding your layers on top. So right now I'm just doing these four as the chocolate layer and the other four are going to be different colored layers. So you could see here, like I was mentioning earlier, what you could do is you can add that layer of chocolate, then add your nuts or whatever you're going to put in the center of it, and then you're going to add another layer on top. So here I'm doing that just so that it has enough layers of items so every time you take a bite it's something different so there we're just adding some more sprinkles onto there now i know it looks like the mold is already filled from the camera angle but it's not so you'll see now that when i add the rest of the chocolate it's going to cover it completely and then you could start to see the mold being completely covered by the chocolate and that way everything is sealed in so when you do freeze this it's all put together nicely Okay, so our chocolate wasn't enough, so we had to take a little more chocolate and melt a little bit more just to finish off these two. That's why I mentioned that this is a really good mold. It does hold a lot of chocolate. So if you are going to plan to purchase the same mold, just keep that in mind when you plan on making these because you're going to need a lot of chocolate to cover them all. So you could see now you could see the bottom of the frogs. Now, by all means, you can smooth this out and make it look very presentable at the bottom. But to be honest, it's the bottom of the frog, so no one really looks at it. That's why I'm not really smoothing it out and making it perfect. But at least what's most important is that the whole mold is completely covered on the inside. That way you get your frog shape. So I'm just trying to uh, use out as much of the chocolate as possible. You don't want to waste it. Chocolate is a very valuable commodity, so you don't want to waste that. And I'm just adding it in all different places. Don't be afraid to mess up the mold on the outside. All of that can be cut off when everything is frozen. So I'm just playing around with it here. You can also press it very gently just in case you notice like, for example, if you lift up the mold and you notice that some of the chocolate is not in certain places, you can take that spoon and just press it down slightly to get more of that in. So you see now I've also melted the yellow chocolate. Now the yellow is really beautiful. It's a very bright yellow and I'm just working that in as well. So with the first four chocolates, they're all going to be the milk chocolate of course and then the pink and yellow chocolates are going to be for the last four. So here I'm just doing the same thing. We're just pouring that straight in and with this we had a lot more of the yellow so it was pretty easy to cover that guy and so we covered him completely I didn't want to add more stuff to him he was already fine with what was going to be on the top of the frog 
So I didn't want to leave the yellow chocolate aside for it to dry out. So what I did was I took the back of the spoon and I'm just drizzling this across the chocolate and that way it's gonna make a nice marbling effect once we add the other colored of chocolate onto it. So you see I'm doing that with two of them here and like I said you can get pretty creative with it. I'm gonna do half and half on this last one on the side here. So you can also do really cool designs with it instead of adding sprinkles you can make little designs on the inside and then pour the chocolate in. There's a lot of ways that you can work with this and make it your own. So now I also melted the bubblegum pink chocolate. You can see that that is a really nice bright pink. So I'm working with that as well with the same method and I'm just drizzling that through. And what I'm going to do is because I'm drizzling that through and I'm doing that as well here, I'm going to add the rest of it. How we're pouring it in as per usual, we're going to do the same with the other two drizzlings. We're not going to move anything around and you'll see from where I'm working with here. So now we're finished with that one. So that's going to be one plain pink one. And you see here that we're working with this as well. Now I added a little more than expected there, but we're also going to mix that into each other. Now I'm not mixing that one as thoroughly as the other one because I wanted to make a different design with it. Okay, so I'm just adding in the excess yellow chocolate as well as the pink. And you'll see that we're just covering up that design that we did there. And don't be afraid to cover it up because it's going to move around on the inside with the chocolate moving around into the mold and it's going to make a nice marbling effect. So we're also doing that here with the rest of the pink chocolate as well. And you're just going to maneuver your spoon until that is all flattened out. I'm also just shaking it slightly so that everything is even and in place. And you can always lift it up to make sure that the chocolate is in all the right places before popping it into the freezer. So I'm going to pop this into the freezer for about 20 minutes and it should be ready to go. Okay, so after 20 minutes in the freezer, I took these guys out and you can see they're rock solid. Now, if you are doing this as a last minute project or something that you wanted to give to somebody, you can do it for 20 minutes like I did here. They work perfectly fine and they don't melt. If you wanted to do them overnight, that's even better because it'll even keep it even more fortified if you're going to bring these to a party or anything like that. And you could see that the mold is a very good mold. I will try to find that link for you guys. Um, you could see I didn't really have to use much force. All I did was press the back of the frogs to get them out of the mold. And those are our guys, so let me pick them up. And that is our chocolate frog recipe. I guess you could call it a recipe or a DIY. Pretty much the same thing, but that is our chocolate frog recipe. I know we don't have the actual authentic chocolate frog boxes, but unfortunately we don't have those on hand, so we decided to DIY some boxes and put them onto a tray. So this would be a really nice gift platter to give somebody. We also added some chocolate strawberries so we took the leftover sprinkles and the chocolate and we just dipped some strawberries just to add them as kind of like a gift basket or something that you can give to someone who loves harry potter as much as we do and you can see all of the colors are very much honeydukes inspired i will try to find a picture of the candy shop honeydukes that's the harry potter candy shop and it's very colorful and that's where we got the inspiration to change up the normal recipe of a chocolate frog. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, let us know in the comment section what's your favorite treat from the Harry Potter films and book series. Ours is definitely the Exploding Bonbons, so I think that's something that we might do on this channel. Let us know if you want to see more Harry Potter recipes. We would love to do them. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos every week. Now, we also decided to take a little bite out of one of these little guys. Unfortunately, he had to make the sacrifice. <laughs> so I once you bite into it, you could see that there's going to be nice little layers of different treats. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic week. Bye.